There's little doubt that 19th century Australia, particularly the bush, was a challenging, hard, often desolate place for a woman. However, the woman in this story is testament to the power of determination. Louisa Albury was the second daughter of a family of ten girls and two boys. She was born at Guntawang Station near Gulgong, New South Wales, on February 17, 1848. As society decreed, her schooling came second to her home duties, especially caring for her younger siblings. Louisa took refuge in singing opera. With the discovery of gold, her family kept a general store at Golgong, and it was here the passing miners heard Louisa singing and suggested starting a fund so she could travel to London for a music education but her parents would not agree to let her go, a matter of great disappointment for the aspiring singer. In 1866, in love and eager to escape the drudgery of home life, she married handyman and gold fossicker, Norwegian-born Niels Larsen. They joined the Wedden Mountain Gold Rush and later selected 40 acres at Eurundery. In the fashion of the time, they anglicised their surname to Lawson. Between 1867 and 1877, Louisa bore five children, including her firstborn and destined to be famous son, the writer and poet Henry Lawson. But by 1883, the marriage had broken down and Louisa left her husband and moved the children to Sydney. There she did sewing, washing, and took in boarders to supplement the irregular child support payments of her estranged husband, and through diligence managed to save enough to purchase, in 1887, the ailing monthly newspaper, The Republican. She and Henry edited and wrote most of the copy. The following year, Louisa started Dawn, a magazine that would publicise women's wrongs, fight their battles, and sue for their suffrage. Along with household advice, fashion, poetry, a short story, the feisty monthly reported on current affairs that affected women. Dawn was an immediate commercial success. That same year, her husband died and left enough money for her to buy a professional printing plant. By the following year, she was employing 10 women, including four female printers. Louisa Lawson was no armchair propagandist. In editorials, she presented feminist arguments for opening the legal profession to women, for appointing them as prison warders, factory inspectors and magistrates, and giving hospital appointments to female doctors. She continued to publish Dawn for 17 years. In May 1889, Louisa launched the Campaign for Female Suffrage, announcing the formation of the Dawn Club, declaring, Who ordained that men only should make the laws which both men and women must obey? At the Dawn Club, women met regularly to discuss every question of life, work and reform. And through Dawn, she created the public knowledge of women's affairs that helped to move opinion towards the enfranchising of women in New South Wales in 1902. Louisa will also be remembered as her son's first publisher, printing a limited run of Henry's short stories in prose and verse, which was sold at one shilling. Louisa died in the hospital for the insane Gladesville on 12 August 1920, aged 72, two years earlier than her illustrious son. She'd been living alone before being admitted in 1918, her memory failing but still strong-willed. 
In Henry Lawson's Outback Stories and Poems, women are regularly portrayed as hardworking, resourceful, kindly, and long-suffering. Perhaps this was inspired by his mother's life. Although she is remembered as the mother of a famous son, Louisa's legacy of social reform, especially for women, changed Australia forever. Louisa Lawson is buried alongside her father and mother in the Anglican section of Rookwood Cemetery. Thank you.